Hello and welcome, it's Dr. Red Fizzle here and this video is going to be about, be about vitamin B14 which, which in my last video I described as the elusive vitamin. Now, why, why would I call this vitamin elusive it is the question you're probably wondering. Well, well the reason why is because, is because nobody as yet has been able to find out very much about it so this, so this video is going to be quite brief I warn you so, so before you sort of press the dislike button that there's not going to be an awful lot of information in this video just simply because scientists haven't managed to find out much about this particular vitamin okay okay so, so I'm going to list some of the sources are at vitamin B14 and um, one of the main troubles with having not discovered much about this vitamin it, it is, is to actually class it as a vitamin there's a number of sort of characteristics it has to comply with um, and because there hasn't been much research, there's been a, it's sort of led to a lot of debate as to whether this should be called a vitamin at all. But, but since since it has been called a vitamin so far, um, I might as well discuss this with you as a separate vitamin. Okay, so the sources of this vitamin are meat, liver, eggs, grains, and yeast. Now, now, now the reason why grains and yeast are a good source of this vitamin it, it is because they're a good source for, for like vegetarians and vegans um, as I mentioned w w with one of my vitamins um, it, uh, uh, so yeah, yeah, sorry as I mentioned with vitamin B12 otherwise known as, uh, as cobalamin um, I actually mentioned that, that that's not particularly good for vegans because it's very hard for vegans to get like, unless they have like high doses of particular, particular like, types of soya and stuff they can't actually get enough of that vitamin. With this vitamin, there's not the same issue because grains and yeast are sort of a vegetarian product, and sort of vegetarians and vegans can consume it because it's not derived from an animal. Um, the other thing about, about this vitamin is it's supposed to assist the enhancement of anti-tumor growth. So, so essentially, uh, let, let's sort of unpack what that statement means. It's supposed to um, prevent or help prevent formation of cancers because obviously tumours are cancers um, they don't have to be but a cancer is a type of tumour uh, okay so help for prevent formations of tumours okay, okay okay so so supposing we had some more evidence like to support that we've, we've so far got some we've got some particular studies that do mention that it helps prevent formations of tumours but I, I wouldn't sort of, sort, of, sort of hold that as gospel because that could change when there are sort of further studies carried out by scientists um, it's also supposed to help the prevention of anemia so prevention of anemia and uh, and sort of, sort, of, sort of the majority of the B complex vitamins are actually involved with the prevention of anemia because anemia tends to be a, a sort of primary a, a sort of primary deficiency symptom with the majority of particular types of vitamin B so, so, so there's nothing sort of specific or special about this vitamin it sort of is very similar in the sense that, that it's similar to most of the other vitamins um, with regard to that uh, okay so um, I'm sure you'll be very disappointed to hear that there isn't actually much more I can talk about with this vitamin because I simply haven't been able to locate any more information than this about this vitamin so uh, I'm very sorry folks that I haven't been able to sort of be more help with you about this vitamin but uh, as scientists discover more about it I'm sure more information will, will become available by books and by the internet so, so I'm sorry about that and I'll see you in the next video which, will, which I'm sure I'll know a little bit more about which is vitamin B15, otherwise known as pangamic acid. Alright, so I'll see you then.